you very much for the introduction. I'm very pleased to be here, although I'm a little nervous because it's the very first time that I speak to so many people and not on screen, not online, but in person. Myself and the working group around Claudia Kamal, we carried out some uh, trials with coatings that we applied on biochars and measured the impact on the yield and the environmental impact like nitrate leaching and laughing gas emissions. And I would like to present the results. Very briefly on myself, I worked with biochars for the first time at Uni Hohenheim during my master thesis. And I liked the topic to the point that I wanted to continue working in this field. And I was happy to have the opportunity to do my PhD at university at the University of Geisenheim. And I'm in the ABC for Soil project as an uh, employee, and we want to pr develop an organic fertilizer on a plant basis that will lead to high yields and low impact. We have project partners from uh, University Aachen and Trondheim University and the Ithaca Institute. What's very important to us is that the starting materials are sustainable. We don't want to compete with other means of use. Very briefly on the problem, I'm sure you're quite aware of the problem. Soils emit greenhouse gases, including nitrous, nitrous oxide. And uh, if you take all the laughing gas emissions on Germany, 77% come from agriculture. So this is a good starting point because there is a reduction potential. Then there is another problem you can also see on the right hand side of this map. These are measurement points for groundwater and the green points, that's okay. But in yellow and red, you see the threshold values for nitrate in the groundwater have been exceeded. We are talking about those regions where intensive agriculture takes place and intensive husbandry, which means that there's a lot of manure ending up in the fields and at the wrong point in time at times. And we found out in a couple of studies, uh, not only us, but many other people, we realized that the negative consequences can be reduced by using biochar. It was realized that if you combine biochar with uh, something organic, for instance, this is the picture of Nico Hagemann's group. You see the organic coating on the surface of the plant uh, of the biochar plant particles, and this organic coating can improve the properties of the biochar. Other studies have come to the same result, and that, that is with low molecular acids. This can be related, and this leads to uh, better capacities, better properties. It's good if nitrate is bound to biochar, but I want to grow something. I want the plants to grow and they need the nitrate. And we wanted to find out in how far the nitrate that's bound to the biochar and in how far this is still uh, available to the plants. And we tried out some experiments. I'm going to uh, present two. In the first experiment, we investigated the influence of biochar feedstock and the production process with various organic coatings under different moisture regimes in the soil, dry soil, changing soil that's dry at times and most humid at other times, and the influence uh, on nitrate leaching from a sandy soil, the soil we have where I study. So this is a three-factor pot trial. We carried out in a greenhouse and I used the sandy soil. 97% is really sand, a low hummus content of 1.3%. A fertilizer to have something organic in there, I used compost, 80 kilo nitrogen per hectare. As it was quite an extensive trial and I needed to handle many things, we had three sub-experiments along the coating factor. I'm going to speak about that in a moment. It was all designed in a way that there was randomized block design in the individual blocks to make to exclude that if the sun shines early on one side of the greenhouse, the pots will be influenced by a different factor as compared to the other side of the table. 
During the experiment, there were two heavy rainfall events that were simulated. Uh, we gave a lot of rainwater onto the pot and the leachate was captured and the volume was determined and the nitrate concentration in the leachate as well. And depending on the volume and the nitrate concentration, I could calculate the, the nitrogen that was washed out. Let me get back to the factors, the breakdown. Uh, the factor one was the raw material of the biochar and the pr production material. We had the control variant without biochar. That was the same for the three parts of the experiment. There was a variant with pine bark, a spruce bark, uh, and they were produced uh, of, by our partner in Aachen, 500 degrees Celsius and then um, uh, apple wood from a Kantiki, among other substances you can see on the slide. It was all sifted to uh, a size of less than 20 uh, and 20 tons per hectare. You might be thinking that's a lot, but we assume that 20 tons per hectare, that's the application rate. We have a concentrated integration at the root of the plant and we, and one fourth, we have the 20 ton per hectare, but if I see it to the whole area, it's five ton per tons per hectare. And our pot, our pot trial was taken out of, of this sum where we expected the highest nitrate leaching. Then there's a second factor, the organic coating we tried to bring about. We had a control variant without coating and one variant with black tea coating and cafe coffee coating. We used coffee or coffee grounds that we had collected before. We had uh, donors, uh, kind donors. We uh, cooked it for 20 minutes and this liquid was applied to biochar. It dried there two days in a drying chamber. The third factor was the humidity of the soil. We had a, a humid uh, variant where we that we watered two times per week. It was a sandy soil, it dries out fast. And this is why in this uh, humid variant, I had cycles of it being dry and wet again. In the second stage, there was no irrigation, except for the heavy rain events that we simulated. For those who like statistics, it was a three factor design, 42 variants, and I had four repetitions of each variant. It was uh, assessed with a variance alternative and uh, with the uh, Kruskal Valles test and another test. And there was a difference in the control variance between biochar, where no coating took place because no biochar could be, there could be no coating. I realized differences in the results. And this is why later on I put the results in relation to the control group. This is the result. Here we have groups of three of bars. The first one, the white one, is without coating. The gray one is black tea. And the third one is coffee coating. And there is the differences. So black is coating, gray is tea coating. It refers to the control group. Here you see the starting point is zero and then the relative deviation to zero, to the zero control. There are effects, you see that at first glass, glance and we were happy about that and there are differences between the wet and the dry soil, the coating and the use of the biochar. Uh, that ha There hasn't always been a positive effect, effect on nitrate leaching. But then we carried out this variance analysis and found out which ones are random effects and which ones are statistically significant. You could say, well, this is a saying, this is a value that is solid. We see that with black tea coating in dry soil, there is a reduction of nitrate leaching and in the wet soil or moist soil only in one variant. If I do it with coffee grounds, it looks much nicer, particularly in a moist soil. The use of coffee ground coated biochar always led to nitrate leaching. So this is why in a second trial, we are only using coffee ground coating anymore because that's most beneficial. 
You see the uh, feedstock, which we took as a basis. You see it with and without coffee coating. We didn't only analyze nitrate leaching, but also the spinach yield and the laughing gas emissions. And here again, uh, this was a pot trial, but a two-factor trial. As I explained before, we have the same sandy soil we used as a fertilizer biogas manure. We applied it to the, we used spinach and five plants per pot. And here you, you, I used the randomized block design. Here again, we have simulated two heavy rainfall events, one right before sowing the, uh, the spinach to leach out as much as possible of the nitrate and the second event after harvesting the spinach. In addition to that, we have measured the nitrous oxide emissions. This seems complicated at first class. It's still uh, complicated. It's not that complicated anymore. We had uh, airproof boxes where we put the product in and we took a, a gas sample, measured, analyzed it with a gas chromatograph. And we had a, uh, an initial and an end sample after one hour, in between one hour, and we could measure the greenhouse gases that were emitted from the soil in that time. And to extrapolate this to a larger, longer period of time, you had a linear interpolation between the em emission times, emission period. Again, the schedule, um, this is the experimental setup, a weekly irrigation, uh, greenhouse gas emissions were measured. And there was a pause, the soil was dried. And then I simulated a heavy rainfall event um, irrigating the soil. I sowed the spinach and the second uh, rainfall event followed. We wanted to find out the following. The nitrate that was bound to the biochar, will it be retained? And will it be available to the spinach afterwards? Here again, the factors I didn't use, the control group, no, no biochar. Uh, one from spruce and one from spruce bark and rape straw and wheat straw produced in a funnel in the Contiki, uh, supported by Markus Lange in Aachen. He saw a challenge with the straw, but it worked. And we used five tons per hectare. That was, so I'm looking at the whole field. And we applied it as a root application. The second factor was coffee coating the same production method as in a trial one. And in order to have a real control variant, I use sand to coat it with the coffee to be able to compare, is it because of the coating? Does the coating have an effect or do we also need the biochar to produce an effect? Two factor design, as I said, 10 repetitions, 10 variants, five repetitions of each variant with a variance analysis uh, that we carried out to produce the analysis. Here, the results, the nitrate leaching, the lower part of the bar, which is uh, brighter, that's the result of nitrate leaching of the first heavy rain event. And the little bit that's on top of it is the second heavy rain. So it's not that much if you compare it to the other bar. And so the biggest chunk of the nitrate that was there in the soluble form was washed out right away. What we see is that the use of biochar did have an effect. And the coating also contributed slightly, maybe. You see that there are differences depending on the, the feedstock you use. Nitrate leaching is higher with the coating as compared to without coating. The straw biochars, it's the other way around. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. Here you see one candidate, uh, rape straw and coating. There is a significant difference as compared to the control group and the lowest nitrate leaching. What pleased us a lot is uh, the improvement in the yield. The candidate with rape straw and coating had the highest spinach yield. 
and it was the only one that was different, significantly different compared to the control group. And what you also see here is that coating doesn't have an impact on the yield alone. It needs to be a combination of coating and biochar that leads to a yield increase because coated sand alone didn't yield a yield increase. And if you look at the yield, the coating is a more clearly more important factor than the type of biochar you use. Greenhouse gas emissions here, this is what it looks like. At the top, you see without coating the scenario, and below you see the scenario with coating. I've divided it into two stages before uh, putting the spinach seeds into the ground, and then after this process, uh, that is what you see in the rear part. But you see at first glance that where things happen is in the first part of the experiment. This is why the other uh, information only refers to the emissions of the first stage. If I uh, take the accumulated results, these are the results of laughing gas emissions. Coating does have an impact uh, and bi biochar as well. And what surprised us is that coating leads to a clear increase of laughing uh, gas emissions, particularly if I don't add biochar or spruce or spruce bark coal. When speaking about the straw-based uh, biochars, it's uh, inverted. The emission is lower in general, and, the co and with coating, it's also lower. So we also looked at the uh, analyses of the biochar plants rape straw, which looked so good at the beginning, what you see here is that the plastic content was much lower as compared to the others, and the ash content was much higher. But why is spruce bark and wheat straw similar? And if you look at the ratio between carbon and ash, you see that the candidates on the other side here, and the variant with rape straw and corn and wheat straw have a low, relay, low ratio combined with ash and organic coating. Obviously, there are complexes at the biochar surface that have the nitrate retention capacity and can explain the increased growth of the plant. In a nutshell, in green in the back, you see the spinach yield. In blue in the front, you see the nitrate leaching effect. A nitrogen uh, loss, and in red, you see the laughing gas emissions and the nitrate that goes out that way. Here you see the variation without the biochar, 10% is lost through nitrate and laughing gas emissions. What you can see is that our rape straw candidate with coating has the highest uh, spinach yield as compared to the lowest nitrogen losses. Here you see the result. Summary, we can say that the organic coatings on biochar can reduce nitrate leaching, but this is also influenced by the soil moisture and the type of biochar. Uh, experiment one, coffee coating was more effective than black tea coating. In experiment two, the outcome was that uh, biochar with coffee coating leads to increased spinach growth, but it doesn't work if I use only a coating and no biochar. And the influence of coating on nitrous oxide emissions depends on the type of feedstock. Uh, with and without woody biochar, there are increased emissions. Emissions are reduced if I take a coating and straw-based biochars. And we've seen that a spinach is growing better if less nitrate is lost. This means that this nitrate that isn't lost is probably plant available and can explain the increased spinach yield. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. So we have uh, the same question. And I, you explained it so well. I mean, it was so well structured that it doesn't give room for any questions. But still, if there are questions. 
I noticed that as soon as plants are growing, there are almost no laughing gas emissions. Did I understand that correctly? Because the emissions always happen before spinach is uh, grown. So the conclusion is that we don't have a problem if we grow plants anyway. In that instance, it's more due to the time, the period between the fertilization and the sowing of the spinach that most of the action has already happened. Thank you for your great presentation. I always ask for the why. And I've also wondered why have you made the decision in favor of coffee and black tea coating? And I thought it was interesting because both has caffeine. And if you apply that to the practice, have you looked into the effects caffeine has on plant growth or other organic bind, uh, binds that make an impact on plant growth? And what could be the alternative to coffee or black tea coating? That's a good question. We came up with that because previous studies showed that organic acid, it needs to have something to do with organic acids. And tea and coffee have a slightly acid pH value, so acids are there. Both are products that are either ferment, fermented or roasted, meaning that complex organic structures have already happened du uh, through, during the manufacturing process of, tea, of the tea and the coffee. We used coffee because people are just happy because they can get rid of the coffee grounds. It's a residual substance that is there, that is available. And then the impact on caffeine. I'm not entirely sure. On the one hand, we used coffee grounds and no fresh coffee. This means the caffeine concentration is clearly lower than in normal coffee. And other possibilities of coating, that is everything that is slightly acid and organic. I could also imagine that you compost tea could also work well. I'd like to add that regarding the activation. You mentioned coffee grounds that you mixed with simply mixed with biochar. How do you do that? And on the activation, I think in Geisenheim, a lot of coffee and uh, is consumed because of the university, but also a lot of wine uh, grapes uh, fermented. Couldn't you use that too for activation? In any event, that would be worth a trial. But I did not look at that. But in any event, that would be exciting to look into. I always produce an extract. I cooked the tea for a long time, 20 minutes, and the coffee grounds, I also boiled them for 20 uh, minutes, but then I only used the liquid and dried it onto the biochar. I didn't use the solids. Just a second, I promised that we would take online questions first. Thank you. The chat woke up and also asked some questions. Andreas Haller would like to know if the multiple coating is something of the biochar is something you would con you consider to increase the effect. Well, we thought about that, but we wanted to find out if there is an impact on the laughing gas emissions and the yield. And if we see something, I don't know if you can reach uh, more of an increase through uh, more cycles or more coating of or more cycles of the same coating in any event it's interesting and exciting to see what's possible i mean this was just some first study to see what is possible i'm sure that more is possible two more questions on the origin of the nitrate the microbiome, does that include additional nitrate? Does it add nitrate? And what fertilizer have you used? In the first trial, we used compost. And during the duration of the 
experiment, the compost also brings about micro microbial life. We uh, uh, mineralization takes place in the course of the events, and we try to use that. So the leaching at the beginning and one of the, at the end. In the second experiment, we used biogas manure, which isn't dead either, and microbial life also takes place in it. But it was distributed to all the pots in the same way. Every pot received the same amount. This is why the effect cannot be explained by the fertilizer. There was a question over there. Do we have uh, another mic, Nico? I didn't want to intervene. That would be unfair. But the caffeine in Arabica beans, you have 1.5 per percent per weight is caffeine and most is already extracted once you drink the coffee. So what we've used uh, was brought about by roasting hydrocyclic bindings, you know, that they glue well to the surface. And that was one of the reasons. And in the food industry, that is a huge residual amount. Uh, but it was interesting to use it per se, because that's a, redis, a residue we have everywhere. Felix Adel told me yesterday there are people who collect that at Starbucks. Maybe you should get you in touch. 